Welcome back into the Tell Me Shorts teaching series here today, where every day we try to deal with a subject that impacts our lives as believers and our Christian walk with Christ. And then we try to find principles by which we can adjust our walk so that it lines up with the Word of God. Today, I want to talk to both men and women, and particularly the men and particularly the women, both of them because we have an issue that has to be dealt with. And it seems to me that as I have dealt with a lot of Christians and I've talked to a lot of pastors, nobody's willing to deal with the issue. And I wanna to talk to you about committing your eyes, committing your eyes unto the Lord Jesus Christ. But how do you do that in a highly sexualized, sensual culture that we live in today? All over the world. We're seeing this everywhere, all over the world. We're seeing this all over the social media. And so how do you commit your eyes to the Lord when we have a culture that is highly, that is highly sexual and highly centralized? Let me draw your attention to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 7. And look at me. There's a verse there in verse 27. Look at this in Proverbs chapter 7, verse 27. It says this, and remember, I'm reading at the New American Standard Version, so depending on what version of the Bible you have, please tune in with me. Look what he says. Her, her house, is the way to Sheol, descending to the chambers of death. Her house is the way to Sheol, descending to the chambers of death. Whose house? Look at this. The adulteress. The woman who seeks to entice and draw attention to the beauty of her body and weaponize this body to draw the attention of men onto her. And men fall for this trap every single time. I think I know what I'm talking about. Listen to me carefully. I am a preacher, but I am not dead. I see this everywhere. And what is worse yet, is that it is, it, it is now in the church at full force. Just watch, look at the women, how they dress provocatively, okay? And they come to church to raise holy hands and is beyond me. And the church seems to be very comfortable with that. Why? Because it now church, the church is now culturalized. We are now dominated by our cultures all over the world. Now go back, look at Proverbs 7, 27. Her, the adulteress. House is the way to Sheol, descending to the chambers of death. Now the place Sheol is the place of no return. Now notice the profundity, notice the gravity, notice, notice the critical importance and the weight that this verse places on this issue when it says, her house is the way to Sheol. It's the place of no return. Now in the Old Testament, a covenant, a covenant was entered into as a guarantee of what? It was a guarantee of future benefits and protection. Now, I want you to consider, for example, turn your Bibles to the book of Job. And in the book of Job, I want you to see this in Job chapter 31, verse 1. Job chapter 31, verse 1. I want you to see this. Just to follow the trend of thought here for a moment with me. Consider the covenant that Job, this man, had to make. He said, I have made a covenant with my eyes. He says, when, when then I shall look upon a young woman, I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why then, notice this, why then should I look upon a young woman? Young women and older women, you know exactly what you're doing. So stop the nonsense. You know exactly what you're doing. You're playing with fire. Listen to me. And, and Job made a covenant that my eyes would be upon him and not the, not the lust of the flesh, which a lot of women are showboating around today. Listen. Now, and you go, wow, that's just a problem for, for, for men. Mm, yeah, it's a problem for men. It's not just a problem for men, because you see, in the way, the, 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 the essence, the makeup of men and women is completely different, and men are attracted by the eyes, by the eyes. Right? So are women, but the by and large, the majority, that's the issue with men. That's the reason why women know exactly what they're doing. So don't play stupid. You know exactly what you're doing. But he also addresses the issue to women. Women can be sexually enticed as well by the eyes. Look what, look what uh, there was a man that was speaking 
okay? And that was a man, Job, okay, that was speaking, but the same, how would I say, same gender neutral idea is found in the book of Psalms. Open your Bibles to Psalm chapter 119. Psalm chapter 119, and look at verse 37. Look at verse 37. Look at it very carefully. He says, turn away my eyes from looking, look at this, looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. And so we have, we have principles to draw from here. And the time to make a covenant with your eyes is in the time of reflection and sober commitment. That's when you have to make this commitment. Listen, I see women who are just scantily dressed, just barely dressed, and they're walking and they're walking around with their boyfriends and their husbands and everything else, okay, as if nobody notices them. And you see this everywhere. It's just, I'm, when I say literally everywhere, that's not an exaggeration. I walk with my wife together all the time, and both of us, we see this all the time. And But it's become sexually, culturally, centrally acceptable, and it's infiltrating the church. So those of you who are believers, and you claim to believers, okay, and you're walking around showing all the flesh, and something is profoundly wrong in your walk. Look, a number of years ago, I was in the country of Brazil. Mm -hmm. And I was in this particular service, uh, church service that I was in. And let me tell you something. The overwhelming, and, and Brazil is a sensual culture. is a sensual culture where the women pretty much dominate everything. And in this culture, right, I'm, I'm in the church, and I asked the pastor, I said, Pastor, do I have the authority of the pulpit? Yes or no? Now, he and I had already had a conversation about this, and I raised this concern with him in his office. I said, how do you allow all these women in here, okay, who are just scantily dressed, scantily, barely dressed, and many of them have bikinis, and because it's, a, and I go, I don't understand that. I, I just do not comprehend that. Well, he said, well, that's our culture. This is how we are, blah, 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 blah. I said, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. Now, the men were not complaining. They were happy. They were happy as can be. In fact, it was very normal behavior for them. So when he gave me the pulpit, and I got up there, and I told him, listen, and I told the ladies, I said, this is not a meat market. We are in the house of God. How dare you come dressed the way you are in this church service and pretend to be holy while the rest of the people are falling apart here? And I scolded them. I asked them to stand up and leave. And they got up mad and they left. And the pastor was convinced that the church had died at that moment. But his wife, the pastor's wife, told me, thank you. Well, that was the morning service. And the pastor was convinced that they were going to cancel the service at night. Well, we came back at night. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something. What was started in, what was absolutely amazing, was see how many of those women came back to church properly dressed. Look. The time. The time to make a covenant with your eyes is a time of reflection and sober commitment. Now, the father in the book of Proverbs, okay, warned his son, go back to Proverbs chapter 7, and if you would take the time, and I would encourage you, please, read Proverbs chapter 7, read it from verse 1 to verse 27. Read it all completely, okay, and read it slowly, okay? And here you're going to find that the father is warning his son to consider the danger and the damage that is associated with yielding to sexual temptation. You know, one reason why sexual temptation is so, it is so damaging, and I'll tell you why, because there's no end to it. You know, murder, stealing, cheating, deceiving, okay? all those, all of those sins have ends to it. But the sexual temptation and the sexual flirtation and all these other stuff, okay, there's no end to it because it immediately appeals to the flesh and it takes a hold of it. So as parents tell their children, Mm -hmm. about all of life, okay? An important lesson that they might share is that it's easier to stay out of trouble than it is to get into trouble. Listen, a way to avoid the trouble that comes with sexual immorality is to make a covenant with God and just simply not to go there. And I've had to tell people, as I've traveled around the world, and I've had to tell them, I says, you're improperly dressed. And they want to talk to me, and I said, we're not having this conversation. I said, you are improperly dressed. 
I mean, I don't care what the hurt is, what the need is, okay? You are in property dress. Listen to me. And a covenant, you have to have a covenant with your eyes. In our visual world, it's a good place to begin because everything in the world today is visual, 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 visual. Go back. Look at what he says in Proverbs chapter 7, verse 27. Her house, the adulteress, because that's how you're acting, is a way to shield descending to the chambers of death. Husband, listen to me. You ought to take a good look at your wife and see how she's dressed. And it's a conversation you should have. Because you see, we have become more fashionable, more social. And we're more concerned about being fashionable and social and acceptable in the cultural context. And you wind up violating principles of the Word of God. Commit your eyes to God in prayer. That they may look upon the, okay, and desire only that which is good and godly which God has committed into your hands. There was a great preacher, R.C.H. Linsky. R.C.H. Linsky. Notice what he said, and I want to quote this for you. He said, No sinful act desecrates the body like the fornication and sexual abuse. Commit your eyes to God in prayer. 